Hey everybody, welcome back to a video mess. So Tarek and continuing the series, is that an analog in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? Where I go over different OpenFP GA analog pocket cores, show you how to set them up, talk about all the diverse settings and give you some game recommendations. And today we're going to be talking about Game Boy and Game Boy Color under OpenFPGA, which is different than the internal core if you plug a Game Boy or Game Boy cartridge into the back. It's going to be missing those screen filter effects, but otherwise it's an amazing way to play and I'm going to show you how to set it up. Before I get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But pretty much everyone and their brother had a Game Boy or Game Boy Color back in the day. It was one of the most successful handheld systems of all time. Nintendo absolutely killed it, using inferior hardware in new and innovative ways to be able to bring a cheap handheld to market, and we're going to get it set up today. Now you're going to see that we have two different BIOS files. You're going to need a BIOS for both Game Boy and Game Boy Color. And be aware that the folders to install these are separate. I'm combining two tutorials into one because it's basically the exact same overview here. But you're going to see we have all these games. I own all of these in my collection. And we're going to unzip them. And we're going to take a look at the file extensions because that's going to be really important. You're going to see that some end in GB and some end in GBC. We can get rid of the zips. Completely useless now we need to put the gbc files in one folder and the gb files in the other so let's deal with that we'll go ahead and copy over gbc bios as well as our game boy color games and we'll pop over to the micro sd card on our analog pocket and you'll see that we have all these different folders we're going to pop into assets now you'll see we have gb and gbc gbc stands for game boy color that's where we're going to put all of the files we need in here under the common folder. I've already been experimenting around, so I have the GBC BIOS file. So if it asks me to overwrite it, you can either say yes or skip. But now we have all the files we need for Game Boy Color to run. We still need to address Game Boy, but you'll see here they all end in .gbc. That means they're all Game Boy Color game files. Now popping back over to the original folder, we now have dmg underscore rom.bin as well as Kirby's Dream Land, a Game Boy game, black and white, not color. So we'll go ahead and copy these over. We'll move back over to our micro SD card on our analog pocket. We'll go to assets and now we need to put the games in the .gb folder. This is going to be for Game Boy games, so just be aware you do need to separate them because the ROMs and the games and the cores are now separate on Analog Pocket. You're going to see here I've got a DMG ROM.zip. We're just going to delete that. It needs to be BIOS, but if you find these files somewhere else, generally it might not be named how you need it to. It's DMG underscore BIOS. That is how it works. And if you don't have any of these folders on your Pocket Micro SD card, go down below. I'll leave a link in the description. You want to use Pocket Updater. I did a whole setup guide on this. This will bring down all of the diverse cores, get all your folders set up so that you are just ready to play when you actually get your games and BIOS files loaded up onto your Pocket. So now that we pop into OpenFPJ, we're going to go down to Handhelds and again be aware that Game Boy and Game Boy Color are two separate FPJ cores. If you want to play an original Game Boy game, you need to load up that selection or else you're not going to see any of the games whatsoever. Click the game, it's going to ask you to load the ROM, and then after like two to three seconds of a black screen, you're going to be presented with the Game Boy logo and you're going to be right into the original Game Boy games. It is super simple if you get the files in the right place, but if you don't see your Game Boy games, that means you probably put them in the Game Boy Color folder. It is a sort of thing I feel like a couple people are going to make that mistake. But seeing the original Game Boy run under OpenFPGA is awesome, and I do hope soon that Analog updates the ability for developers under OpenFPGA to use those screen effects, because if you put a cartridge in the back of the actual Analog Pocket, you do get some more options. But as far as options are concerned, you get a control controller guide you can basically set it however you want but it is 100% set the way you would like it to if for any reason you want to invert the a and b button you totally can and you have rumble strength as well if you have any sort of rumble capabilities but other than that there's really not anything under the game boy core that you can really change for settings you basically just load your game and start playing but do be aware we have save states as well you'll see here if we go down to memories go to save states and load up the save state we just made we're right back into the game of kirby we are no longer dead and that is one nice thing for the game boy and game boy color core you're going to have those save states available to you but this just looks awesome on the dock. It looks great on the screen. I just hope we get those screen filter options at some point in time. If we pop back over and load up Game Boy Color, you're going to see all the games we've added as well. 
And this is going to just basically make it so that you can play different things. The Game Boy and the Game Boy Color were super similar hardware wise. The Game Boy Color was backwards compatible, but they are different hardware specs. So you do have a completely different core with a completely different splash screen. But once you get in and you get into Game Boy Color, it's awesome as well. Both of these open FPGA cores do such a great job of replicating the original Game Boy and Game Boy Color hardware. It's just missing those screen effects if you were using the actual cartridge port. But in Pokemon here, as we run around, this core as well does support save states, and that's absolutely spectacular. But again, these settings are going to be very, very thin. You have control setup, you have rumble feedback. It's going to mirror the exact same settings you get if you were playing the original Game Boy Core. But like I said, you do have save states, and they can be quite useful. Hold down the home button and up, and you're going to save a state. And if you pop back into the memories option and you go to save states, you're going to see the state we have here. Just be aware it does replace the cartridge save with the memories, but you can basically basically rewind time and play around. But this looks amazing docked. It is just such a good screen output. And when you're playing handheld, it's so much better than playing an original Game Boy Color unless you have a screen mod on it. But this just looks incredible and that's the best thing. And of course, this is the analog pocket. And it was modeled after a Game Boy and Game Boy Color. So in the hand, it's going to be an extremely excellent experience as far as the controls and overall layout are concerned. Analog had to model this after some piece of hardware and they went with the Game Boy. So when you're playing it, it just seems like Nintendo Nintendo themselves made a Game Boy recently. The controls are great, the D-pad's decent, the buttons are where they need to be, you're good to go. Just remember again, if you're not using cartridges, you're not getting those screen effects, so don't leave a comment down below asking when those are coming. I have absolutely no idea, I don't talk to anybody at Analog. And if you want to use a different controller, your options are basically endless, you just need two buttons and a D-pad, and you're 100% ready to play some Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. And the best part is, both the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color had massive libraries both in the US, Japan, and PAL territories, so your options are basically going to be limitless as to what you actually want to play. Something like Bionic Commando here, an absolutely spectacular game with some amazing animations for the era. Want to load up a new game? Just go down to the load cartridge, pick whatever it is you want, and then you can start playing another game right from there. It's the Game Boy and Game Boy Color in your pocket, except made by a modern company called Analog. And I will say the sound quality on this core is spectacular as well. So go ahead and listen for like 35 seconds. I'll come back, tell you a little bit more about the core, games you should play, but otherwise enjoy the music because it's awesome. Audio quality over the dock with HDMI sounds spectacular, and if you are playing on the actual pocket itself, the speakers are relatively decent. They're not going to blow you away, but they're going to get the job done. But there's so many awesome games to play on the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, but this part right here, Din is a popular dancer. Just seeing her dance seems to raise someone's spirits. I don't think that's what she's implying that it's raising for Link, but you can do with that comment as you will. I like to slip a joke in here and there. It's always fun. But honestly, Game Boy and Game Boy Color on the analog pocket are spectacular implementations of the original hardware. There's so many great games to play. I just hope that those screen options do become available across from the cartridge port to open FPGA. But if you run into any problem setting this up whatsoever, leave me a comment down below and I'll try to help if I have the time. But start playing some Game Boy and Game Boy Color games today. That's basically why the Analog Pocket was made in the first place, so that you could play Game Boy on it in a form factor that was super familiar if you owned one, and replicating it if you didn't. But short of that, I'll be back next week with more Analog Pocket guides and videos. If you have an idea for a video you want to see, leave me a comment down below and maybe I'll make it. But enjoy your weekend, go play some Mario Golf, it's an awesome game, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye